And so to recap the 12 exercises that everyone should be including in their programs, you've got this face pull, this face pull, this face pull, this face pull here, this face pull, and don't forget, this face pull. I mean, what do you think, I'm that fucking nuts? I mean, I love face pulls, but I promise, it's only on the list once. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, Athlinex.com. Today I'm gonna to talk about the 12 exercises that everyone should be including in their programs. And before anybody jumps out and says, well wait a second, not everybody should be doing every exercise. Guys, as a physical therapist, I understand that sometimes physical limitations actually preclude you from doing an exercise. But I'm talking about if you are physically capable of doing the exercises in this list, then we all should be doing them and including them in our programs if we wanna see the best benefits. That being said, the face pull, spoiler alert, is actually gonna be one of the 12, so be prepared. Guys, we're gonna start breaking down all the rest of the 11 exercises though, and it starts right here with a squat. So it figures we start with the king of all lower body exercises, the squat. And we know that this exercise is incredibly powerful for hitting the quads and the glutes and the adductors and even the hamstrings. However, it's also one of the most fundamental movement patterns that we all need to sort of learn how to get stronger at. I mean, hell, even getting up and down off the toilet every day is gonna require that you know how to squat. Now I, for one, know firsthand exactly how orthopedic issues can limit your ability to do the exercise. However, it doesn't mean you skip the exercise altogether. There's always something else you can do. There's always another variation. I've shown at great length the benefits of a Bulgarian split squat, allowing you to train one leg at a time and keep a flatter, more neutral lower back for those of us that have back issues. I also showed how squatting to a box can be a lifesaver for those that have patellar tendonitis or knee issues. Or even for those that just aren't capable of handling heavy loads on the exercise, you have the option of single dumbbell versions like a goblet squat or a drop squat. The bottom line is you're not just allowed not to skip leg day, but you're not allowed to skip squats, provided you're able to do at least one of those variations. So now if the squat is referred to as the king of all lower body exercises, you have to also look at it maybe in a different way. Even a great album has an A side and a B side. For me, the B side in this case is the posterior chain, and there's no better exercise for hitting the posterior chain than the deadlift. The deadlift is gonna train the all important hinge pattern, which is one that you're gonna to need to master if you not only wanna excel at the lift, but actually in everyday life. You see, the hinge is not simply bending over at the waist, but letting your hips sit back as you bend over at the waist. And that is a key difference, because if you can learn how to master this, you not only will become much more efficient in all of your lower body exercises, but you'll be protecting your low back at the same time. Now, once again, orthopedic limitations can rear their ugly head here, and people can say, I just can't do the exercise without my back hurting. Well, it might be because you're trying to bend over too far. You see, there's nothing stopping you from performing a mat elevated version of the exercise to just take a couple inches away from the bottom of the lift. Those few inches can make all the difference in the world between you actually being able to perform the lift pain-free and not performing it at all. Likewise, you can perform it with a trap bar. Again, the higher handles allow you to perform the lift from a shower or depth without having to abandon it altogether. Guys, there's always a way if you're willing to find it, and here I'm gonna make sure you find it because the deadlift needs to be in your program somewhere. And so now let's shift our focus to the upper body here for exercise number three, and while we're at it, why not complement the big three? We've got the squats and the deadlifts already, so now it's time for the bench press. And we know that the bench press is one of the best ways to build the chest, period. What we also get is a king of all pushing exercises because we're getting ample shoulder and triceps training on the exercise too. Now I get it, you can have a preference for how you train the exercise. Maybe you don't even have access to a barbell and you wanna do it with dumbbells, that's fine with me. Again, orthopedic issues sometimes rear their ugly head here and they cause shoulder pain as you bring it down. Bicep tendonitis, rotator cuff issues. Remember, there's one thing that's always a great equalizer in those cases and that is just simply slowing the reps down. If you perform these reps very, very slow, oftentimes the pain that you feel goes away. And that goes back to a thing I say all the time, is it the structure that's the problem or is it the stability? And oftentimes on the bench press, it's the stability. If you learn to lower the weights a lot slower and perform each rep with intent, oftentimes those pains go away and your ability to perform the exercise is restored, putting it back in its rightful place in this list of 12. And so with the dead ringers out of the way, now we get to my personal preferences. And you're not gonna find an Athlete Next program that doesn't include this next exercise, and it's the pull-up. And the reason why the pull-up appears in every Athlete Next program is not because I think it's the best bodyweight back exercise there is, it's because I think it's one of the best back exercises that there is. It demands not only a great amount of strength to pull your entire body weight up to the bar, but it requires that you're able to do so with a rigid torso, meaning you have to be able to keep good core stability from your feet all the way up to your fingertips. That being said, if the exercise is too easy, it's easily scalable. You can simply attach some weight around your waist to make the exercise more difficult and create the overload that you need, or you can simply add a band here to create an assisted option. The fact is, there's no escape in this exercise. It's one of the best pull exercises you can do, body weight or not. And so I won't keep you in suspense any longer because obviously the face pull is gonna make its way into this list. 
And so let's just get it over with. The face pull is one of my favorite exercises, once again for the posterior chain, but this time for the upper body. Because it doesn't just do one thing. It trains the upper back, rotator cuff, and scapular retractors, three areas that we oftentimes just don't do enough things for. And the nice thing about it is it's pretty damn flexible. In other words, you can do it a lot of different ways. If you have access to a gym, you can certainly do it with a cable like this, or you could just do it with a band like this if you're training at home. Or even if you have nothing at home, you just have a towel and a weight, you could do it like this too. Now, this version, well, I mean, I think that's just something Jesse told me was functional. Or maybe just plain fun, I forget. But you can skip that one. And speaking of the rotator cuff, let's keep exercise number six here tied into the last one and keep that corrective exercise focus going. You see, I'm a big believer in the corrective exercises and especially those that train external rotation of the shoulder. And it's not just something that I say is a buzzword. It's something that we need to have in our programming because guess what? The rotator cuff muscles are the only muscles that externally rotate the shoulder. So if you're not making a concerted effort to work in some exercise that does this, I don't care what the rest of your program looks like. This is one muscle imbalance that you're creating that you're not be able to overcome, at least not at the expense of the health of your shoulder. Something as simple as banded external rotation here is going to get the job done. Again, it doesn't have to be sexy, it just has to be effective. And if you don't have access to a band and you're training at home with a pair of dumbbells, you can still get the job done. Just lay on your side and perform the sideline dumbbell external rotation exercise. The key is that you need to focus at least one of your exercises to the rotator cuff. How you do it is up to you, just make sure you do it. So as we cross the halfway point of our list, it's time to head back to the lower body for the last of our leg exercises that are going to appear in this list of 12. And for me, this is a no-brainer. It's got to be the lunge, or at least some variation of the lunge. Now I've talked about my love for the reverse lunge because of its kindness to people that have anterior knee issues. That being said, there are other ways we can do the exercise. You see, the lunge is the perfect complement to the sagittal plane based exercises we already picked. We have the squat, we have the deadlift. You can take a lunge and direct it in any direction you want. I've shown before the benefits of the frontal plane side lunge and also the transverse plane drop step lunge. All of these are going to give us a more multi-dimensional approach to our training. And when we talk about a joint like the hip, which is a three-dimensionally operating ball and socket joint, we know that we have to train in more than just one plane of motion. The other nice thing about the lunge is that it gives us a chance to actually divert our efforts either towards the quads more or towards the posterior chain and glutes and hamstrings more. And all we have to do is alter the position of our body when we do it. So if we lean forward when we do the exercise, we light up the posterior chain more effectively because we put it more effectively on stretch. If I stay nice and upright with a tall torso and go straight down in any of these planes, I'm going to work more on my quads. Again, the choice is up to you, but the choice should not be whether or not you're doing lunges because I think they need to be part of this list every single time. And so the inclusion of exercise number eight here was not meant to push anybody's buttons or ruffle any feathers. It's just simply to put an exercise in here that belongs on the list, and it's the push-up. You see, people might have a problem with this being on the list, especially coming from me, because I have a habit of reading video titles without actually watching the video. Push-ups are killing your gains, but not really, if you do the right kind. You see, what I'm talking about is find the right difficulty level of the push-up. You see, if you're looking for hypertrophy gains from the exercise, which many are, then you need to be able to find an exercise variation that actually challenges you. And if you're just doing knee push-ups when you can handle much more, or if you're just doing regular push-ups when you knock out 30, 40, or 50 of them in a set, it's time to up the ante. Raise the stakes. Introduce a new challenge for yourself. And there's no easier opportunity to do it than with a push-up because the variability of this exercise is off the charts. That being said, because of this versatility, I'm able to program it into every single program I do. We can either do it as one of the harder variations of the push-up, or we can use one of the less difficult variations on the back end of a drop set to keep the intensity going. The context and the application as always matters, but it's important to not sleep on the exercise because it has the ability to be a really powerful addition to every single workout that you do. So whenever we put together an exercise list like this, it's important to not only look at the exercise selections alone, but to look at how they complement each other. And when we're talking about pressing exercises, we've hit our horizontal press option, but what about our vertical plane? Because that's important too. And for me, there's no other option than the overhead press. Now I get it, the overhead press can not only be one of the most effective strength building exercises in the vertical plane, but it could also introduce some pain into a shoulder that's actually already having a hard time with any overhead pressing movement. And that's because impingement or a lack of shoulder stability can come back to bite you pretty quickly whenever you try to raise your arms up overhead and don't have the mobility to do it. But in an instance like this, I don't recommend abandoning the exercise entirely. I said there's always a way, just like there was with the bench press. And here, all you have to do is go one dumbbell at a time. And the advantage here is that you have a better chance to stack your joints more appropriately with your wrist, over your elbow, over your shoulder, which will oftentimes introduce the stability that you're lacking that makes this exercise, once again, a pain-free option and something that belongs in your program. 
But let's say you don't have any issues at all. Again, you're not limited to just a strict overhead press. You could do something much more explosive, like a push press where your lower body gets involved, or simply out of preference or a desire for change, you can easily swap out the barbell for a pair of dumbbells, regardless of what you do choose. Just make sure you choose one of them when you're putting together your list for the exercises that are going to appear in your program. Which brings us to exercise number 10, which is now the dedicated arm exercise portion of our list. And who knew an arm exercise on Jeff Cavalier's list? Well, guess what, guys? A lot of us are in the same boat. We want to see some additional gains on our arms that comes independent of the accessory role that they play in all these bigger compound lifts. So for that, I'm going right for the triceps now, the bigger part of our arm, and we're talking about the lion tricep extension. And the thing that I love about this exercise is it puts that all-important long head, the medius portion of our triceps, basically two-thirds of the two-thirds of the size of our arm, on a great amount of stretch on every single repetition. If you do this appropriately, the arms will be held back overhead and never really positioned back in full vertical position because that's just going to take some of the stress off of the triceps. When we're trying to build them, that's not what we want to do. Now, of course, we have some variations here as well. If you can't handle the maximal overhead stretch that comes from the first variation of the exercise, you can simply shorten that a little bit and take it down to a skull crusher. Once again, even in the finished position here, you want to make sure you have a slightly less than vertical position on the arms at the top to make sure you keep the stress on the triceps. And of course, you can decrease that intense stretch a little bit more by opting for something more like a JM press. No less difficult, you're going to be able to actually handle more load here, but we're not getting that overhead stretch as much, but we're still capable of hitting the medial lateral heads to a high degree. Remember, if bigger arm size is something that you desire, then you're going to have to find a way to program a direct exercise for your arms in your list. This is my selection for triceps. So when you're looking to round out that arm development, and I mean literally round it out, now we've got to talk about bicep exercises, because one of them should be in your program somewhere. And for me, it doesn't have to be complicated. As a matter of fact, when it comes to bicep training, there really is nothing complicated, because we're talking about a simple hinge joint up and down. For me, the barbell curl is going to be my choice. Now, I like the exercise with a barbell because I can load the exercise up a little bit heavier than usual, and I get the benefits of the cheat rep option, where I can load up the weight and take advantage of that heavy eccentric overload, which I believe is the number one stimulus that has led to the biceps growth that I have. That being said, you don't always have to use a barbell. You can simply switch it out for some dumbbells, or maybe even introduce a different piece of equipment, like a band. And the benefit of the band is that it's going to change the strength curve up for you. So instead of always having the peak tension in the middle portion of the exercise, the band is going to max out its tension at the top part of the exercise when the band is most stretched. If you want to get the benefits of all of it, guys, maybe try introducing the combination of a band and a dumbbell together. We're going to get a more consistent tension experience in the middle and at the end of the exercise, regardless of which variation you choose, guys. Remember to choose one of them, because when it's bicep size you're after, the compound lifts alone are not going to get it done. You're going to need to select a dedicated bicep exercise for best results. And last but certainly not least, when it comes to the exercise selections, guys, you're going to have to have some variation of a barbell row in your plan. And the reason for that is we're going back to the planes of motion here. If the pull-up was addressing our vertical pulling needs, the barbell row is going to take us to the promised land where we're looking to address our horizontal pulling needs. And once again, the variation here matters less than the movement pattern itself. The row demands that we actually have a good control of that hinge movement again that we talked about earlier in the video, because you need to be able to set your hips backwards to prevent yourself from just simply leaning forward, which is going to place excessive stress on your back. And exercise variations are possible here too with something I call the dead row, where I get to load up more weight on the bar and get the hinge benefits of the deadlift in the early portion of the exercise and continue it with an explosive variation of the row. However, again, you perform the row. Make sure you have at least one of them in your program here if you want to have a well-rounded program with the right exercises in place. And so there you have it guys, 12 exercises that everyone should have in their programs if they're physically capable of doing them. And again, even in the cases where you have some limitations, it doesn't mean that you get to skip the exercise entirely. Hopefully in this video I've provided you with some alternatives that are going to make these exercises possible once again. If you're looking for programs guys where we include all these exercises in everything we do, including our brand new All American Muscle program, you can find it over at athenx.com. If you found the video helpful, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what else I can cover I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. And finally, if you haven't done so, make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.